Okay, so we will get started. And like I said, if we end ahead of time, that's fine. You know, if you guys have to, you know, if you're like, okay, we're done by 10, 10 30, that's fine. So, okay, so the first thing on our agenda, we're talking uh, ACT was kind of a big one. So I just put in here discussing testing time, procedures, what will this look like, suggestions. If there's something else, I'll, I'll kind of keep notes. You guys feel free to type in there too if I'm missing something. So um, I'll kind of open it up. I got one question. When we tested these seniors these, this fall, have any of you gotten the labels? No. From a, because yeah. you know, I tried, but it's a certain type of label thing you have to have. Mm -hmm. I've, I've tried all my different labels. So. <laughs> we haven't received, we haven't received any reports or anything. No, we, okay, I'm just checking because I haven't either. Mm -hmm. and, We've been able to go online and look at the scores, but yeah. that's it. We can't I mean, even do that. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Wow. No. Okay. I, I have no idea what they scored other than what they've told me, a couple of them. Okay. <laughs> because they went on that, what, success.ACP? Yeah. I didn't yeah, even know about that until one counselor right. from another area. I guess yeah. I feel very out of touch. I do call Iris a lot because trying to get my online ACT online prep, I only have 15 seats for juniors and I have 32 juniors. So it's just kind of like, and you know, half the time I have to leave a message and she still hasn't gotten back to me and it's been a week and a half. It's probably because she's working on our issues. I feel so bad for her. Yeah, we still are I mean, not recognized as a district. And so it wasn't until yesterday that I didn't, I couldn't, um, when I go on that success, I don't even have buttons. Yeah. And so finally yep. yesterday I got accommodations. So I know she's been trying to figure out our stuff because we can't access anything. <laughs> so I'll tell you, Kendra, that she had tried to access it like 20 times. And every time I deny her because she kept coming through our account and not yours. <laughs> she, yep. You've been denied. You've been denied. <laughs> it's such a nightmare. And I have to apologize for my appearance. I've been having an allergic reaction on my eyes. And so I kind of look like death, but the kids keep telling me, they're like, you look tired. I'm like, yeah, I know. <laughs> Mascara, ma can't I'm make faces, water, right? <laughs> well, I'm just going to tell yeah. you something, Kendra. I'm just going to tell you something because I just have, I've done this, I've, you know, since Boyd County's been consolidated for three years. You know, seniors are sending me their unofficial transcripts or whatever for scholarships. I have called Wayne State College every single year because we're still West Boyd. Yeah. And it's so hard. It's like I've talked to registrar. They had me talk to yep. a computer person. And it's like. It doesn't matter. No, it doesn't. We're still OC and we're still Clearwater High School. and we're Yeah. So, I mean, though. that's an issue that. <laughs> You know, it's just and it shouldn't be that hard because schools all over the state are consolidating. I so know. they should figure out some way that we could streamline this process because it's a disaster. I agree. I agree. Sorry, I just wanted to know if anybody else didn't. I, I thought I was the only <laughs> one missing ACT stuff. Nope. All right. So is there anything else about ACT? Well, yeah, I think they're just in a whirl right now too. Yeah. I, I, I think so too. <laughs> Yeah. Thrown them for a loop. Yeah, it has. Okay, so if we go down to remote learning, um, do most of your schools have a plan for that? Somewhat, yeah. Somewhat. Okay, yeah. Okay. yeah. Have, have teachers been practicing that in case it goes? I mean, it, it can be a um, way to do business, but. We've been doing it when we have kids quarantined. We've been using Microsoft Teams to reach out. I mean, that way there's really no disruption in instruction. Okay, I'm going to add that to the, I put live connection, I put Zoom, Google Me, I'll put Microsoft Teams. I kind of forgot about that. We were just having the conversation. We just had um, a student come back from their second quarantine. And for the second time, they didn't do anything when they were out. And so uh, their first day back was yesterday and they came late at nine and got out at noon because they're a wrestler and they went to the wrestling meet. And so we're wondering if maybe we could put something in where if they're out on 
quarantine and they're not doing their work, then they get zeros in there and they're not allowed to do extracurriculars until they're caught up or something because she's way behind. Mm -hmm. And maybe that would be a little incentive for the ones that are out to maybe do something so that they can play their sport or their, you know, band or whatever when they get back. Especially if they do that, doesn't do it. I mean, that it, it, it seems like maybe that's an issue. So, do you have a down list, Kendra, or like an activity down list? Because that's but how it, our, it, it's that's due how Friday mornings, and so yesterday it hadn't been submitted yet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that would be so. Yeah, it just <laughs> and I have two seniors that are failing required classes, and oh, I got disaster. Yeah. 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 Registered letters. Well, they're like, so if I fail, I'm not paying the the money to do Apex. So what's the point in coming back next semester? And I'm like, Pfft. how do you answer that question? Yeah. And do you think it? Do you see it because it's uh, the time that we're in, or would they normally be problematic? Or yeah, mine yeah. would normally. They they've made their own bed, but being in quarantine hasn't helped either. So. I know. And do you guys all have a, like a learning management system, like either Canvas or Google Classroom or? Yeah. Seesaw. Okay. Okay. That's good to know. Okay. But again, it's just like, it's just like with those, what Kendra is saying, you know, we've, we've, as a school, we've covered our, our behinds by talking to the parents and everything like that. But the parents also tell us, well, we can't make them do anything. And it's like, well, and I told my administration, I said, when I get done with uh, semester grades, probably the way it's looking, maybe February, uh, (laughs) that we need to send registered letters out to those parents to let them know that, because I got, I've got three seniors. They don't pass the required courses for semester. They're not rocking through graduation. Yep. You know, so registered letters or something because I said that they're not going to come back and and say, well, whatever. But I don't know. But they were failing before quarantine. So COVID hit in March. So I'm just. I would think this is just going to be the excuse that gets them off the hook. <laughs> I don't think so because we've already talked to them. Well, that's good then. That's good. But. I just hope everything can go back to normal soon. Yeah. Because a lot of my students, I think a lot of parents are using this as an excuse for their kids not to show up to school. Okay, I can't type. Okay, so then um, there was on their uh, scheduling. So I just put, I didn't know if it was issues with credits, rethinking what is offered, um, creative ways to offer courses, um, sharing between schools. I didn't know. Um, like I said, we can kind of get that conversation started. You know, we're using Apex for credit recovery, and I really love the system. I mean, we've worked with you, Tammy, on that, and I think setting that up. But at the same time, it seems like if the kid isn't motivated to do the work in the classroom, doing it through Apex isn't any greater of an accomplishment. I mean, it's not. It's. it's I feel like all we do is pull teeth. Mm-hmm. Especially because it's on their own. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm. I use Apex right now. I got two kids are working because they can't take physics because my science teacher is so we had to split a lot of my a lot of our seventh and eighth grade classes for science and our high school because we just we our enrollment increased so much over the summer. We got a lot of South Dakota kids and um, I use it for those higher learning you know, honors and stuff like that. But I know exactly what you're saying, Gina. I got one senior that 
you know, Apex was an option and I, he has done absolutely nothing. And, you know, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink sort of thing. But I agree it would, but I love, I, I do like Apex. And the parents can't control them at home. So it's no, kind of- No, but, but they expect us to. Mm -hmm. But I don't know, scheduling, um, I don't know about your guys' schools. You know, we've been having a hard time finding subs just yeah. because our subs are older. And during COVID, they don't want to come because they don't want to take the risk. So, I mean, we've been, our teachers are pretty stressed. <laughs> and, you know, like I, like Patty was, or whoever was saying, Dawn, you go and you sub in these classes, you know, because they think the counselor can go through, go and be a, be a sub. And I don't know, I'm, I'm, just kind of holding my breath to make sure some of my teachers for scheduling don't decide to retire early That's a fear. because of COVID. And because, you know, I'm not, I'm surprised I got the video to show of me because I'm not real techie. And with, with this remote learning, I've got some teachers that really struggle with the remote learning because they're older. Mm -hmm. And they just don't want to deal with it. So I'm, I'm hoping they're not going to retire. But and then if they do, it's to... like scheduling is going to be harder. Mm -hmm. Because would like you re it. depend on what they are, would you, I mean, hopefully you would replace them or find oh, yeah, but... teachers to find the, to get the position there. That's right. You've been on Nebraska teaching jobs lately. Holy cow. Yes. I was shocked. <laughs> but and I wondered. Tricky. I wondered about retiring early because I just thought too, if they're close and they're like, you know what, I, because again, you know, I, I love the, the opportunity for remote learning, but like when I, even what I'm doing here with Canvas or some of my class or things I'm doing trainings to keep up. And like I said, I, I don't have the daily schedule that teachers have. I, mm -hmm. And you know, yeah, they have it all, but then it's, it's that process to get it up and then to make it digital and then make sure that it works. And when your technology is down, so it, it doesn't always work uh, for, yeah. at all. I do, I do so many activities that you can't do remote. That's and right. So I started this year and I had my Ziploc bags of material and binders. And I thought I'll have to shove these home with these junior high kids and then try to figure out how to show them how to make a mousetrap car or the solar car or the house. And then the kids are like, what do you mean? You didn't think we'd be in session? I thought we didn't, I didn't think we'd make it till Labor Day. And then every event gives you a two week, hold your breath, state fair, hold your breath, Thanksgiving, hold your breath. And, and now, you know, you just don't have any control over anything. And at any time you've got to figure out how to get things sent home and keep rolling. Last spring, how did you check on the well being of some of those kids? It was hard. And the teachers academics were taking up time. So you, oh, yeah, I felt so guilty. Like, what can I be doing to check on my families without being pest? Because some families with multiple kids and then teachers with multiple kids, they were saying, well, we're on that screen so much already. And I thought, I, I go to lunch, I go to recess, I walk by classrooms, I watch my kids in action outside of just one-on-one. -on -one. I just couldn't do that. Mm -hmm. And you just felt helpless sometimes. What did you do? I, I checked in. I was here, you know, during COVID, I was always at school. I just checked in with the teachers that were doing the remote. I said, who are you concerned about? Okay. You know, that's what I did because it's like, you know, for my careers class, mm -hmm. I scaled back. I mean, yeah. I did everything on Google Meet and I, sca I scaled it back to, I think we had three projects to do. Yep. Me but too. again. It was, I'd rather have them do their math, <laughs> do their English, because I want them to pass, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, that's, I know what you're saying. I know Kendra, you're saying. muted. Sorry. Our situation <laughs> was a little bit different because we had a, a death of a staff member. 
And so during our shutdown, and so um, I started out calling every family, but they don't answer calls from an unknown cell phone. <laughs> so then I, I was texting every family and I had a lot better response. Texting. That. Uh-huh. Most, I texted every family at least, texting. at least twice, probably. And then I also started, we made a calendar of all the Zoom times. So I had the um, all K through PK through 12, what time they were Zooming each week. And then I hopped on every Zoom just to pop in and say hi to the kids and see. Okay. I kind of watched for a few okay. minutes to okay. see who was engaged. I didn't, I didn't do a lesson. I didn't, I just was there basically. So that's a great idea. Thank you. So that was a calendar of Zoom times. Yeah. And actually it ended up working out um, pretty well because we had a family that was using a hotspot. And so it allowed us to kind of reschedule some of our meetings because their poor uh, second grader couldn't get on if his brother had a, a history Zoom. And so it, it let our teachers like spread out their Zoom so that they weren't overlapping because some of our parent, our families didn't have the internet to support that. We kind of did the same here too at Stewart. We had a schedule of yeah. uh, certain periods of the day would be Zooming at these times and you know. Yeah. And the teachers just put their Zoom links in there so that I could just click on them and join. And mm -hmm. That's great. All right. Yeah, and I, like I said too, you know, I just, I'm on that superintendent meeting every Monday. Um, like I said, there's no talk. I mean, like, I think most of the schools are starting like their schedule time after Christmas. I mean, barring there's no big upset to the apple basket, but um, it sounds like nobody's taking extra time off then. I know that there are some schools that are um, breaking a little bit earlier for Christmas, like maybe giving a day off for the teachers. They don't have to come back, which I think is a great idea. Um, anything to help a little bit of morale because what do you do? Like you said, you're in it. You, you can't change the situation and yeah. you just do the very best that you can. So. Tammy, our, our school is going to present to the school board the idea of starting school on the 11th of January, oh. January a week later. Okay. We're thinking because we have some hot cases right now, we're thinking that families might have Christmas get togethers and we'd like to have two weeks after that to get in the clear, I like, I just can't, I keep telling the teachers to take care of their physical and mental health and get a lot of sleep, exercise, relax in those, if we get a three week vacation, if we do, and then we'll extend in May. But the roller coaster may resume on January 11th. Right. You need to be strong and ready to face that. The other thing I know, um, Madison, they right now are giving, like they go to school Monday, Tuesday, they have Wednesday for teachers, so they have no students, and then Thursday, Friday. Um, Norfolk, last Monday, I believe they did not have school, and this Monday, they will not have school for their teachers. So, you know, I don't know if schools will think about doing something like that second semester, too, if, if things would change. Um, I think that would, would help teachers, just because, like, to expect them when they go home to live sleepy, like you said, it gives them a break, but I don't know. Um, I just thought with Madison, I, I need to touch base to see how that's going for them. So, you know, we were gifted this next Friday off, which is amazing and, and everybody's very thankful, but at the same time, there had been talk about doing some professional development on that day. And so some of the teachers are actually saying, you know, they, they don't want to not be thankful for the day off because they are thankful, but they were also looking forward to having some time, professional development, work time to get things done. That's right. <laughs> so to have some work days built in, kind of like what Norfolk's doing to give those teachers a chance to catch their breath, I think would be helpful. Yeah. Well, and that's, what, you know, from our end, like I, like, I guess just because it's not been that long ago that I wasn't in, in, in there, you know, when they was, oh, what can we do? I said, sometimes I, I've asked teachers, they say, leave us alone. And I, they don't mean that in the bad way. No. I, and I don't take it in yeah. a bad way. I'm like, we are here to help you, but I'm not going to shove down your throat that we need to come and do training and do that. I, you know, and I, if you guys help me get the word out, like if a teacher one-on-one -on -one wants me to come in there 
and help do one thing or stay the whole day to help make some things. I will absolutely do that. I just don't want to schedule big trainings for people. I, I, there's no way, there is no way that they need more different things. They need somebody maybe to me to be an extra set of hands to help them do a iPad activity, something, but we're trying, and we keep, I keep trying to push that here. Like we don't need to come up with new something to, teachers don't want don't you to. I don't think know. the state is being unrealistic like I feel like NDE we still have to do a quest and follow all the same guidelines we still have to follow all of the rule 10 guidelines we still have to do the tip goal like I just feel like the state is out of touch like what they're requiring and then they're wondering why teachers are burned out because you know you have to have that professional development in order to meet um, you know, those tenants. And it just seems like the requirements haven't changed other than the testing with the ends cast last year, but it's like the requirements haven't changed. Um, and the expectations haven't changed, but they're saying, oh, we're giving you less time to do it. And sorry, if you're stressed out, but you still have to, to follow all the rules that have been, you know, that were expected before COVID. Yeah. I just wish they'd come out and, and spend a half a day or a day in the school. Uh, really. Um, I really think that has been, I mean, even when I went out, that helps me. I mean, like I said, I, I just, that's why I said, I keep pushing on this and like, we are not, I mean, we, we can do what's asked of us, but for me to push something out, I'm not doing it. Um, you know, and there was talk on our end, you're like, well, do, cause we're looking to see if we need to hire somebody out. You know, we, when we lost Katie and Molly moved, we don't have a, one extra person and they go, well, schools aren't asking. I said, schools aren't asking because this is a totally different year. You know, it's, it, it's not that they're not, I mean, like I said, we might do little things, but it's that, that we can't base that on, on this year. I don't feel so. Well, and I think our teachers would rather have like a, you know, an hour in service and then six hour to work on it, explore it, figure it out, set it up, get it ready, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it doesn't just get shoved in a file folder in a drawer. Right. Or like I said too, I, I, I need to find out if like, say, I would go out, like, say, maybe, you know, the third grade teacher at Clearwater wants me to come out there for an hour. Like, we can start counting some of that, I mean, as professional development, where it's not given to the whole staff, um, right. but, or, you know, spend a day out there, and I'll go in your classroom in half hour, or whatever. I think professional development needs to look a little different, and then, like I said, give them actually time then to work on that. I know I went to Stuart um, on, huh, it was the, let's see. It was back in November and, and Travis had made time. Like we had two hours with three different te teachers and we just, he rotated a sub for that. Um, and we had really good response for that. We stayed the whole day and just let them come. We showed, we did, and then we let them work and we were right there. So that I felt that was really beneficial. Um, and we got through all the teachers and they had time to practice what we were doing. Um, we're going to go out there on the 18th here and do some things with their kids. So, um, you know, it's those little bits of things I think are, are powerful. So, and I just think sometimes teachers forget that they can just, they can contact us without having to go through a superintendent or principal um, by far. You know, we can come out there, we're not a secret and it's not that we're doing anything we're not supposed to, but just helping, helping them. So, like I said, that kind of got off of the subject, but. Well, you um, know, I'm not, I told teachers, you know, cause we have so many kids that have been out quarantined. I haven't seen some kids for a whole month. And I finally just told the teachers, you know, I'll have your grades done by January 4th. I mean, it's going to put me in a bind that I'm probably going to do some late nights and getting report cards done and at least senior transcripts but giving the teachers Christmas break to get caught up on their grading because some of these kids are still turning things in that were due back in November. So I don't know. I, it's been really hard <laughs> getting, I mean, it's just, I, I mean, I don't know. I made a joke that I'm not gonna have some transcripts done by February. And it's probably going to be the underclassmen because I got to concentrate on the seniors because they need those transcripts with their first semester grades. Mm -hmm. You know, so I don't know if anybody else has that problem <laughs> or if it's just me. No. 
Well, then I think with the dual credit, I went, I know um, we're in the Northern Tier meeting and, you know, just because their semester now, I mean, it's going to, is looking different, you know, in the spring, it's going to go to what, Gina, we talked about what, May 18th or something like that? Oh, you're mute. You're okay. muted, yeah, May 18th, yeah. And our, our board, we graduate, the seniors graduate May 8th and the board will not change that. Yeah, and that's what, I mean, how many conversations have we had with Northeast about this, Tammy, of, you know, trying to find What are we going to do? What are you doing? What did Northeast say? <laughs> uh, that they're aware of the situation? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I that's helpful. before <laughs> you even came, I think, Tammy, you might have been there. It was like in Oct uh, September or October, one of the early okay. times where they were talking about this. I said, that's not going to work for high school dual credit. And they said, oh, we'll look into it. Well, and they're still looking into it. <laughs> they're still looking into it. Nothing's going to change. Well, you know, and on that note, too, I'm really struggling with these dual credit classes. They took them all off. And Tammy's already heard my spiel at the Northern oh, Tier. Yeah. But um, they took them off of the shell on Canvas. So for kids to get their grade or to even access the instructor, and all of my kids have filled out the release of records. So I contacted the professors and they said, yeah, sorry, we can't get that for you. We don't have, we can't release that information to you. And I'm like, my kids have those forms on file. And they said, we don't know how to access those. I'm like, we are on a percentage system. I need the percentage grade, not the letter grade that you have on the, you know, the final grading system. And, but for the kids even to email the instructor that's gone all of why the was that so quick like that gina i was shocked yeah. yeah i don't know because that was another question we asked at northern tier and what was that answer tammy um they're aware of that and i think she was going to get she was going to try to contact their some of the instructors but like my thing is why don't they just like even just put up the grade and then convert it to a percentage and be right there you know, because I know like even Wayne State, like I've taken class, like I could still go to my Wayne State College and I could look and see what every grade I had from there. So I don't so see So the kids why. can't look at the, uh, their grades in no. their permanent records on Northeast? They can, but they can. now they go on to the one, it's just, it's like you got a C plus. Well, what's a C plus in that? Mm -hmm. What was the percentage? Because we're in the same boat. Thank God most of my kids but I still have instructors that haven't given my kids a final grade. Mm -hmm. Yep, we have. And I'm sitting here going, listen, people, you know, well, I'm just going to tell you, I think Michaela has deleted me every time. Oh, you know, I have to find different <laughs> phone call, phone numbers to call her on so she'll answer. Yeah, I know. And, you know, I she's, they're going to get a shock is because I have a lot of kids that aren't taking college classes next semester. Mm. Now, see, I'm teaching a dual credit class, and they told me to go off our school calendar. So my final grades aren't due until next week. I mean, my final assignments for my kids aren't due until next week. Now, are you doing that distance, or you're just doing that in your building? I have one from Ewing, and I have two from here, but it's not in person. It's online. Because I just wondered, like, with ours that we have in school that we run off the calendar, it's the ones that they're doing, you know, through Northeast instructors yeah. or they're right. the ones that are on their calendar. Yeah. I was even wondering, and I was going to maybe reach out to Michaela. I thought of this afterwards. Like, why couldn't the instructor, like, say, if, if you need grades by May 3rd, let's say, if at that point in time, why can't they give them their, give them their percentage grade and then that way it satisfies it for the, the high school, but then they have to complete that for the college. And that way then they'll get their credit a little bit later, but at least that way for your grades for that. Yeah. So I might reach out to her and ask about that. Yeah, Because we had, cause I want grades May, uh, Lee, we graduate May 8th. I would like to have them by May 6th. Mm -hmm. Right. You and, know. You know, we had an interesting situation too. So when the kids in the past, I've just had them get them off of Canvas, take a screenshot of them and send them to me of what their percentage was. Well, when I reached out to the instructors to get the grades, a couple of situations, they had higher grades as finals than they did the, they, they gave them bonus points. And I never yeah. would have known about that if they wouldn't have written them down for me. Yeah. I don't know. Okay, I will read. Was, uh, 
What's that intro to Ed? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know, it was my first year, so they recommended that I take one of their successful teachers Canvas and they just copied it into mine and they recommended that I do it exactly the same as that teacher the first time. Um, and then I could change it however I wanted and it's kind of a nightmare. So yeah, <laughs> it's a, basically it's a hundred point class. Yeah, they just copied that teacher's entire canvas into mine and I just changed the dates is what they told me to do. But it's a hundred point class. And so like everything's worth two points pretty much. And the, like to me, the rubric and the directions aren't specific enough. Um, and so I had to give them full credit even though I didn't want to because technically they followed the directions, you know? And so I've kind of gone through and had to email, you know, on the first couple of assignments, they handed in crap and I'm like, ugh, I don't want to give you full points on that. But at the same time, they did exactly what they were told to do. So yeah, it's, I wouldn't teach it like that again. <laughs> okay, so go up here. Um, course offerings are like too with the DL. Um, are there any suggestions you have like for Molly or um, has she sent out an email for that at all yet for next semester? Okay. So she probably, I just didn't know if there's anything that, that you need, like sharing of teachers or classes or, um, because Ewing, I believe, gets their Spanish from O'Neill. Or do they do it from Lena now? Mm -mm. Okay. And so Orchard Club Not yet. can do it with Linda with Spanish? We yep. don't have a Spanish too, if anyone knows of another avenue for that. I don't, we don't, we don't have that. Okay. Yeah, Linda only sends Spanish one. Okay. Deb, do you, who says your Spanish up there? We have Spanish, but right now we have kids from Niagara taking the Spanish one and Spanish two. So, you know, if, if we don't do Niagara next year, we may be, but you know, she's very limited in certain times and that's just difficult. She can be flexible because she's also the elementary PE. So she has to go every day up to Butte also. Is it Donna Benson? Yeah. It's okay, Donna. I, that's okay. So, you know, yeah. And then we have Mr. Hart that does the histories and we have Cindy Kirsch who do, can do math. She does a lot of our math for the Northeast. She's instructed there. So, but um, yeah. I don't know, you know, I'm getting into some kids. Just, I don't know about you guys, but I've been very fortunate in to have always a class, some classes that are very motivated to take the higher maths and so the college credit, but it's gonna come to a screeching halt probably in the next year or so because some of my classes who, who are struggling, students are in can very, you just hope will pass to go into the next year. I don't know, foresee any of my down the road of a lot of kids taking a lot of college classes. I don't know about you guys. I mean, I'm definitely coming into a different breed of cat. Well, and I have a parent that she wants her son to go do something ag at Northeast and she wants him to start taking all these credits. Well, there's really not a whole lot for him to take. I know. You know. <laughs> you know. I had a lot of kids, you know, with they're going into this year. Uh, I said, look into the colleges you're going to and the programs, and they don't need English 1020. So I have a lot of seniors that aren't going to be taken. They took English 1010 because they needed that, but they don't have to take 1020. And I even yeah. found out that the, a lot of their college aren't even going to need to have them take that public speaking uh, 1110 mm -hmm. for their degrees because yeah it varies. so I mean that's just mm -hmm. it I I don't know if 
I don't know if the other colleges the are making it so that you would have to take their courses. Yes, I think they're building cohorts that you have to take their courses, courses and then they're not accepting it from anywhere else. That's right. And I think that's what they're trying mm -hmm. to do, you know, to make up their costs from shut down with COVID. I was just so going to say I, that. I think that's probably a, a cost issue thing, I would say. Mm -hmm. But I do have a lot of kids, you know, my senior class here that, you know, they're not going to going to college. I mean, and they're doing work study right now in areas that, I mean, they could use a two-year degree, but mm -hmm. if the parents don't support them wanting to go to college, it's like, how in the world am I going to convince them? You know? Yeah. And the only way they would have ever took an ACT test is because they had to. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and their scores very much reflect the fact that, because when I gave it to them, the seniors this fall, I even wrote down who got done with the English part in 10 minutes and their score reflected it. It's like, why did we waste that? Because now see, we made it optional for our seniors this fall, partially yep, for yep. that reason. If they didn't take the ACT, they had to take the English and language and math map test instead. Yeah. I think that I would like to, well, I don't know. It's not, but I'm in the same Just way. because they would have become a behavior and a distraction for everybody else. I did, um, I did put them separate, you know, in the room so that, but, you know, my other students did really, really well on it. So, but it's just. Yeah. The ones that wanted to will, but. Yeah. So, I don't know. I don't think I'm going to have as many dual credit kids taking dual credit in the future that's just basically what i'm saying <laughs> so i don't know and i did put down for nc offer or in um northeast maybe more ag classes because i know like too that that has been they just kind of started that um depending on the need i think and the teachers available I think and I've also talked to them multiple times. They did that training where English teachers without a master's can teach workplace communication. And they said that years ago, they did that for math teachers so that they could teach technical math. And they keep saying that they're going to put together that training for our math teachers to go get trained so they could do technical math in-house. But that's been a year and a half of asking. And I know COVID complicates that, but that's what I would like to see happen so that we could offer that in-house. Because a lot of uh, the ones at Northeast is workplace communication and technical math are your two main classes that they could get knocked out in high school. Mm -hmm. I haven't taken it through Mitchell. The oh, up there. Math. Yeah, MTI. Oh, MTI. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm do I you know what tell you the truth I do a lot with Mitchell uh, but the only snafu that we ran into this year is NDE again uh, unless that Mitchell teacher has a Nebraska teaching license mm -hmm. so <laughs> yeah for those I wonder support. what's going to happen I mean as I said NDE has got to get with I don't know reality and see, they're going to have to make it easier for people to get a credit or teaching endorsements and approved for teachers. Because I really feel that there's a lot of people who have, instead of having necessarily the degree, they're blessed teachers. They have the ability to teach. Don't make it so you have to, especially with agriculture. I mean, there's only one state in Nebraska that, or one school in Nebraska that you can get that with. I mean, they have to look at what is needed for jobs and make it easier to get people in the classroom. I mean, it, it doesn't, just because you have the endorsement doesn't mean that you're a qualified teacher. And just because you don't have the endorsement doesn't mean that you can't teach. So NDE needs to be flexible and they're rigid. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, we're, we'll probably be looking for a pre-calc teacher. I, I don't know how long Ed Johnson is going to keep going, and we love Ed, but I, I know he mentions in the spring, and it makes us panic, and we'll be looking. So if you know a pre-calc teacher that's willing to do an LDL class, we'll be needing one soon. Yeah, I have a math teacher that does is doing dual credit 
calculus okay. through the Northeast and she might be able, but again, she's going to be overworked. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm, I just cross my fingers with some of these teachers when they think about retiring and I'm like, oh, please don't. Please don't. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. So kind of moving on to student concerns, we kind of addressed, I mean, like, and then the elementary counseling sessions, when Kendra talked about making that calendar for her Zoom links, do you think that kind of helped with that, Dawn? I do. Kendra, how did you share, what kind of a calendar were you using? What was your... It, it was just a Google Doc that I typed up, partially for, the reason why I started it was selfishly, for me, it was a way for me to get the Zoom links from everybody so I could check in on the kids after Scott died, but then a lot of teachers and the administrators started using it also to randomly pop in on Zooms and see who was who was doing the Zooms. Mm -hmm. And so it was just a Google Doc with a calendar and and they would just put their their grade level or subject, the teacher name and the time with the Zoom link. And um, that way anybody on staff could hop on any Zoom at any time and see who was there. That's just great. Thank you. I got to take a phone call. Hello. And do you see that um, with your students, I mean, are you doing anything different with social emotional learning or um, are you seeing any issues that they're having um, due to the pandemic or being in um, here at, school? Here at Orchard, we're struggling with attendance. And I know students aren't wanting to come back. They don't want to be here. They liked being at home and doing it. And so they try to find every excuse to be quarantined or, you know, learning from home, I guess. And we're struggling with that. I know. I yeah, have I have some that would rather be in quarantine and some that would rather be here. It just kind of varies on the kids. I had a niece and she's a very good student up in O'Neill. They were, their whole level team was quarantined and she missed the kids, whatever, but she loved doing her work online because she could work at her own pace. And that's, I was shocked because I just thought, you know, but she, she wanted to be in school with her kids, but she goes, if I could just be in school, but do my work this other way and <laughs> the social part. <laughs> yeah, that exactly. And I was like, wow. And I know? think some of our anti-social kids are not anti-social kids, but some of our more standoffish, quiet kids, yeah they they would much rather do that and same with i mean i think there's adults in the work world that have come to love working from home and i think we're going to see after effects of that um and anxiety about being back to normal you know i'm glad that we're in person just so that they didn't get so used to that and not interacting with people because some of them really need that that was the best remote learning was the best two months of bo's life i mean <laughs> what? He didn't want to come back to school because he's like, this is great. I can do my work. And he got good grades because he, he just loved it. Yeah. I have a quite I have a question about the, you know, um, when I, in the summers I work up in South Dakota at the park and I know the, I know like the Wagner school and the Lake Andes school. And I didn't know if any schools around here did it, but those schools, the students and the parents, had to make the decision in the beginning for like, and I think it went by semester. Do you want to go to school or do you want remote? So their teachers had to do both. Yeah. Did any of you have that? I mean, we have remote in a sense, those kids like Patty was saying or whatever that were quarantined or whatever, but do you give that choice? To your students? We did when we mandated masks and it floored me because I heard so many kids in the halls outside my office that weren't going to wear a mask and, and they were also thinking about the fun they could have outside of school hours during you know. Um, we only had one family, two students who are at home and they're doing their work at home and they're doing very well. And I don't know when or if they'll come back when this passes. I think, that, I think once masks are not required, I'm sure they'll be back. 
and they they come in on Zoom. So if I go into a counseling lesson, there's usually an iPad on a stand, and then that this student is there participating. Just felt so strongly about wearing a mask that that was their choice. In our district. Um, I know that the students who refused to wear a mask, the parents just automatically took them out and decided to homeschool. So yep. we, we forced the, the administration, forced the issue, and some yep. of them obviously came from South Dakota, but forced the issue, then you will unenroll your student then. Okay, I'd heard that too. I'd heard of schools that said that. Yeah, ours was a in-person or you're on your own type of thing okay yeah. that's what I was kind of wondering because you yeah. know I think that's just putting a lot of stress on uh, teachers yeah if you are required to do both and it's like oh my god but um, I mean it, I think if the shutdown happens and everybody has to go remote but I understand what Gina says I have a lot of students that suffer from anxiety social or bullying, you know, and they did very well. In fact, that's what they would like to do all the time mm -hmm. is just take everything, uh, classes from home. But I don't think that's going to happen unless, you know, there's more of that trend. And I didn't know uh, if that was something that was talked about uh, at superintendent meetings, uh, Tammy, or not. Well, Norfolk Public, um, starting the second semester, they put out to their their teachers, school or families, um, if they wanted to be in person or go totally remote. And so I think they have about 300 students that are going to go totally remote. Um, I will look into that more and get more like how they're doing. You know, like if they're what the requirements are. If those kids get to participate in extracurricular, I'll, I'll look yeah. into all that and get that back to you. But I know that then also that they were looking at hiring some teachers that just do that because she felt, felt like that would do, put a lot of stress on their teachers to try to do both. So yeah. I will also look at that because I know that she was talking about do, hiring like substitute te or um, retired teachers. Um, so I'll, I'll touch base with, um, with Jamie Jo Thompson and I'll get all that information to you guys. Yeah. Because I thought too, if Norfolk does it and it gets, I mean, I just, I just wonder too what, if more schools will do that or what? Well, I think it's coming down the pipe. I do too. I think if it but to do both is so hard. Oh, I mean, if you do both well, it's really hard. I was gonna say, <laughs> I couldn't. Yeah. And that was probably my toughest thing here. Like in September, when we had some cases and we had a lot of kids in quarantine, and so I've got kids sitting in front of me. I'm trying to teach them. I've got kids on Zoom. I'm trying to teach them, right. but but that was pretty much how we had it. I mean, we're in person. And if you're in, if you were in quarantine or you're in quarantine, you are expected to be on the Zoom with the teacher as well. So, because we were taking attendance, and um, so that that's kind of how we handled it. And not easy on the teaching side of things, no. but okay. we managed. You know, it, it's not ideal, but um, you know, I well, and I, that's I, just you know, the teachers kind of have a light at the end of the tunnel now. You know, they can kind of take a break or whatever. But if that if they knew that going into second semester, it was going to be like that the whole semester, that would be pretty daunting, yeah. I think. Yeah, it's a lot to ask of your teachers. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I've, I've done it. I mean, I've, I'm teaching three classes, so, and I had plenty of them in quarantine. So. I bet. <laughs> we can yeah. all be together. So. Yeah. <laughs> it, I know I have, tough. I have an elementary teacher uh, in Butte that that's what she did because she's kind of like what Patty was saying. She had half her class in quarantine, half her class in person, and she did do that. But but she, just like what Patty says, it took a lot of time. Mm -hmm. it took a lot of time. And it's great if all the technology works, but <laughs> then you've got kids who they don't have the right, the connection isn't good, and so you're waiting on some, and yeah, I mean, it just, it disrupts the classroom. There's no doubt about it. <laughs> right. I just, um, I had taken the thing with Catlin Tucker, this whole, she's very big into blended learning. Yesterday we had a follow-up for an hour and she suggested, because people had asked about, you know, is there a suggestion that we can give to teachers? And she talked about booking, bookends of the class, like have a welcome activity, like when they join online, this is what they do until you get the in-person class started. 
and then you you just divide them up like then you do something with the on or in remote kids have their whatever then they start working then do the inline or in person and then go back to doing like an exit ticket i mean she's kind of set up that way but um again it, th that's fine but it takes the, the the time to set all that up um and it doesn't work perfectly you know but she just talked about too putting having things for them to do online and then in person so they're hearing the same thing but then working on something a little bit different but I don't know, just, just a suggestion, so. <clears throat> well, I put those things, like I said, I'll find out more. I'll find out about how Norfolk's is handling that, so that way then maybe we can learn from them a little bit. Um, so COVID procedures, the latest DHMs, have, are your um, superintendents and principals good about passing those along to you guys? Okay, all right. Um, <clears throat> any questions about, about COVID procedures? Do any of you, so I know technically we're essential workers, so after a close contact, we could technically come to school. Our district has chosen to not do that. If we've been in close contact, we're out for two weeks. Is that pretty much the rule of thumb in Northern Tier, or is that not the case? Just curious. doesn't really matter, but... We've only had one example of that and, or case of that, and they were essential workers, so they were here. It was just... Um, that like one was our principal and he didn't go around the building, he pretty much stayed in his office. Yeah. Yeah, we just- Cause we've had quite a few that. teachers out. And so um, I, I, I don't disagree with them saying they stay home at, after a close contact. I just didn't know if that was what everybody was doing or not or- Well, I wonder with that new because what they talked about too now, those close contact, like if you, in five days, and maybe that because in five days you could test and if you're negative you could come back but i wonder kendra if they would change that because according to the directed health measures well because technically they'd never have to go into quarantine right. if they were essential right. and so i think our district's going to go with the you can test out of it because um mr saney's back today it's day 10 he wasn't supposed to come back until next week for close contact so um yeah, I mean, I, I don't disagree with them being home after a close contact, especially if it's in their house. To me, that's that's kind of a no-brainer. Um, I just didn't know what other schools were doing because I know, like, I think Neely is, you know, they're a essential worker. They can come to school even with a close contact is, you know, obviously wear a mask. and. Mm -hmm. Because the kindergarten teacher, her husband works here and he came down with it. And when I was talking to him after he came back, his wife stayed there. She had to wear a mask and whatever. But yeah, so I was like, I was shocked because I didn't know. Yeah. But he said because yeah, he, he would have been out too. Mm -hmm. So, and like I said, I don't necessarily disagree with it just because we're seeing a rise. I just didn't know what everybody else was doing. Well, and we've had kind of an interesting, uh, well, actually, an interesting conversation with the health department on, let's see, Wednesday. Um, because now with the quarantines, they're just writing down like a list of anybody who might have been exposed. But there's there have been so many people who have gotten it or had COVID that they're not keeping track of whether or not those people have had it or not, and so we're ha you like and they don't want to do they don't want to have a list and say oh this person had it already so then it's up to the schools to say okay this person had it so they don't have to be quarantined and they're not sending a letter out that says that person doesn't have to be quarantined. It's up to the schools. And so they said the same thing with any negative tests or antibody tests. They said it's up to the school. Yep. Well, and I think they're so far over <laughs> overextended because I had it here a few weeks ago. And when they called to ask me my close contacts, I said, well, I'll, I'll give you their names and numbers. I said, they're already aware that I'm positive. And they're like, oh, no, that's good then. And didn't even ask for their names. Oh, yeah. So um, I, I think they're they're way far behind. I don't know. A, I don't know what county I can ask because we have a whole county address, but we're technically in Willow County. So I don't know which case I'm I'm in or which county I'm in. And so I don't know. Like I know for a while they were really behind on recoveries. Also, you know, um, and that's why our our dial was so far up is because they hadn't reported you know, as many of the recoveries as there were yet. So yeah, I think they're just 
treading water. <laughs> Because that was another aspect of the job I wasn't aware of was COVID tracker for counseling. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what I asked Mr. Saney. I'm like, so would I not have to quarantine again if I've had it? And how long does that last? <laughs> I know that, that answer, Kendra, because I had it here at work. I, um, two, two of our workers came in and they listed me as a close contact. And they were going to make me quarantine here at work. They're going to make me take my temperature. And I said, wait a minute. I just had this. So I called the... North Central Health Department, and I just said, explain the situation. They told me right now that, and if this has changed, but they consider you immune for 90 days. Mm -hmm. 90 well, now that my 90, my 90 days is up and I get exposed and I'll have to, but I just, my, Glenn and I have been testing routinely for our, our antibodies. And just last week we tested again and we're still, our antibodies from when we tested back in September till now, have remained high and they did not change. So I feel pretty confident about that, that my our bodies could fight that off. Now, I don't know if that's everybody, but I'm gonna test here again in two months. I wanna do it and just kind of see. Yeah. I'm willing to give my plasma, you know, but nobody's ever, you know, I've, I need to call my doctor and ask about plasma and given because I will do that, but they're not. Is they're it not. 90 days from when? From a, your, uh, when you first had symptoms. Yeah. Okay. So ours was like August 20th till uh, November 20th. I believe that's what it was. And you can get tested for antibodies two weeks after you come out of quarantine. So that's what we did. Just, I just wanted to, because I wanted to see what the levels were. Um, Glenn, he never did go get tested. So I want to make sure that he had it. So just something that, you know, it's just interesting, I guess, if nothing else. So. Well, so how did that work, Tammy? Here's a question for you. I've wondered this. So you said Glenn didn't get tested, but you know he had it. Mm -hmm. So how does that work with quarantining then? When you were under that 90 days, is he, does he, he still have to quarantine? Or, I mean, I'm just- Well, he had I, a quarantine. <clears throat> when I got it, so like I said, that was back early on when they had, so when I got on the 20th, that's when my isolation came for 10 days. He had to do 14 days from the 20th of August. Well, then when he got it in that time, we just from when he had it, then we kept him out. He stayed home for 10 days once he presented issues. I mean, we but knew. I, I, my question where he wasn't on file with the health department is oh. having it. it would, so if he was on November 10th, oh, uh, exposed oh. to it. I see what you're saying. Have, yeah. Uh, I, I wondered that. that. Yeah, I don't know. Well, because we went and got tested for the antibodies, they could maybe could say, hey, I'm tested for the antibodies. I don't have, you know. Yeah, I don't know, Gina, because, yeah, that would be interesting because he never was a statistic, technically. Because, you know, they told a lot of people that if you're in the same household and you have, you know, not to worry about getting tested. So that's what I wondered how that worked. Yeah, and I just wanted to know for sure just because, so he agreed to go get tested, so or for the antibodies, I should say. Mm -hmm. He was a wimp about the other one. I said, really? <laughs> really? <laughs> Just because I came home and said, wow, that was not pleasant. And he was like, I'm not getting tested. I'm like, okay, what? geez, <laughs> you're a farmer, my gosh. But, but he didn't have symptoms near as bad either, so I don't know. But then he's, he had heard somewhere like blood type, so I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that has anything to do with it. I have no idea, so. They say it does. Yeah, so that's, yeah, it's all interesting. Okay, so with the N, uh, the school counseling, did, how, how did, did some of you get on on November 12th? Um, how did you think that went? I mean, are there pros, cons? <laughs> I'd like to be in person, but. <laughs> yeah, definitely. It was okay. I get so much more out of just visiting with other counselors. So that's the part I'm missing when you're not in person. Mm -hmm. That's probably one of the, the best reasons and the, you know, that I go because I get more out of, you know, stuff like this morning than I do just listening to people, but it wasn't bad information, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I don't know why they chose to spread over three days. I don't, I don't know why that is. And maybe shorter. I mean, which, I appreciate that, like I said, too, and I'm sure you guys, like, you learn now, like, 
like too. I, I don't, you know, like I set aside two hours for us, but we sure don't have to because when you're, especially when you're doing learning, I'm like, oh, it is torture. It is, I have, oh, oh, I can't stand all day Zooms or even half day Zooms push it. It's just, it's a nightmare sometimes. Um, and then I'm, I'm just giving that Aaliyah, um, like with uh, you getting reimbursed, it'll probably be coming next month. So um, that'll be coming. I just sent that into her. So, and then with our, um, the NCE conference that's in Kearney in June, we just got word yesterday that that will be virtual. Um, they're going to be charging or last year, you know, it was um, nothing was, was uh, charged for you guys. I just gave uh, anybody that wanted to go, I gave them a $200 stipend for going um, or non-contract payment. They're going to try to do it different now. They're going to charge. So like I said, I'll still cover the cost of the registration but there probably won't be a non-contract payment because then they want to track how many, how many minutes you're on or how many hours you're on. I'm like, that's nuts. I, I no, <laughs> no, 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 no. So, um, so, but like I said, um, if you guys, if there's things that you want to like say a national conference that you want to attend online virtually, let me know because I'll have extra monies to do things like that or other training that you have. Please let me know because with Perkins, I can do that because of again, you know, there's, we're not doing a lot of in-person things. So I set aside money for lodging, you know, um, all of those kinds of things. So please let me know if there's something that you want to do or any professional development that you want to do, let me know. And then um, we can talk about getting that covered. So. I've done the ask online for the last two years. I've gone in person too. Okay. And I'm telling you, it's fantastic. You get so many handouts you get so much information and you can ask if a if a counselor in another state will say well this is what we do then you say could i have a copy of that and they're more than wonderful to share so if you've never done the ask a, the national conference and i think it's in las vegas this year but if they do it virtually like they did last year and i've done the last two years sometimes they're in session and you get the option to do virtually it, it's really quality uh material that they're covering it's good do you know the dates for that don i don't think i have it on my calendar okay I, but you'll find ask uh, the now okay yep I'll, I'll look at that and then i can get that out to you guys that way like I said, if, if any of you want to take advantage of that and the cost i sure will and don let me you know like i said too let me know because um you guys don't have to pay for that on your own i can do that through through these funds so okay good thank you absolutely yep Okay, we talked about NCE is gonna be virtual. Okay, so the, I kept the Youth Frontier retreat on here because um, I was going to do that. And so then when, um, right when we were, you guys let out of school in March, Sonia Richard talked to me and she goes, hey Tammy, she goes, we're gonna do this well, then that all went awry. And I said, you know, this probably won't be happening. So um, do you, is it still something that you think you wanna do if we can do something next fall and we do it here at ESU on different, a different scale so it doesn't cost so much? What are your thoughts on that? For fifth and seventh graders, I believe. Yeah. Or do you I want to go back to kindness? Do you want to do have them do it? I, please, you want to hurt my feelings. But, <laughs> what? I'm sure it's going to be expensive because I'm sure they haven't been. I, I'm because I still get some emails, you know, about, you know, because I'm sure they're going to raise their costs because they haven't been doing any. Yeah, Only I, I would think that too. allow face to face. Mm -hmm. So, hey you know. Deb, why don't you? Could you give me that email or that contact so that I can contact them? If that's something that I could take off your butt. I mean, now I know that. Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, oh, you can take it that. Off is way. really something that I could do because <laughs> that way it's it's more broad and we involve so many schools. So that's something that I can do. Okay, I'll, I'll get it, Elry. Yeah, I'll get the contact to you. Okay, do that. So then I can ask their cost and then maybe I can, I'll, I'll try to come up with some different things. And so then maybe um, um, in the second semester here, I'll send out some options and then we can take a look. You know, I just know that the times that Youth Frontiers wanted to do it, is they wanted to do it in August, right when school was starting. And 
we kind of got that last year that we did it because some schools were not starting yet. Some had started and there was always a busing issue, you know, of when the buses have to get back. And, you know, they just basically told me that this is when we're going to be in the area. This is when you're going to do it. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> I was not real, you know, right. but you know, where we haven't done anything because we, haven't been able to do anything you know it was good I mean my even my older kids loved it that were the uh, the helpers mm -hmm. they just loved the experience so but it is pretty costly right is there a better time well it would be but it's always and maybe now that they have been <clears throat> not out of commission but maybe they'll be a little bit more lenient on when they can get here to do it but at that time that was what we've always done and they weren't willing to budge. You know, I just thinking if, if like to them, or if we, if we, I do something here that we do at the ESU that we do on our own more, you know, is there, what, what time of year do you? Well, I'd stay away from winter because with winter, yeah. you never know if things are going to get canceled. Right. I don't winter. mind the beginning of the year. Um, you know, we had done it before, like in yes. late August, even yeah. early September, that wasn't so bad. But like the third day of school was a bit much. Okay. Yes, it was, and they were not, they were not going to, they were not going to budge. And okay. I, I, cause I told them that I said that, you know, it's early. <laughs> so like I said, if I, when I contacted them or if, like I said, we do something, maybe try to do it. Like, you know, maybe we'll let school get in session and maybe, maybe yeah. that first part of September, maybe. Yes. Or yeah. Okay. And again, you all know the cold conference is not going to happen just because of with everything else, trying to get subs. And then with the uh, school counseling going three days, we thought we'd just postpone it till the next year. So, um, anything else for the good of the cause? I have a strange question. So I was having a conversation with Jan in Ewing, and I think Denise was there also. So all three of us, well, maybe still have, I don't know. There's old Northern Tier Counselor Binders. Some of you veterans may know what I'm talking about. Here, hold on, let me grab one. <laughs> that might have been before my time. <laughs> I, I think there's several of them, yeah. This? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, do you guys use these? Sometimes. I use some activities. Yeah. Because I looked through them and I'm like, the activities look really good, but I don't know that if I was looking for that activity, I would go pull this out of the bottom drawer of my filing cabinet. And we're, we're trying to go through things as we're preparing to move. And so I didn't know, like, are these still widely used? Or are they just a few, like, go through and maybe pick out a few that you think you're going to use type of thing? And and file 13 these that, or I don't <laughs> that's the, is that the Missouri guide I don't yeah I don't know if it's the Missouri guide you know we is purchased it? that though as a northern yes tier. as a northern tier you yeah. purchased it I didn't know if you guys wrote these yeah. like yeah. made these up or well, purchased they them purchased, they were purchased with okay. northern tier funds okay I threw one copy away because I had we had two here at Boyd County, but I did keep one. Okay, because yeah, we could potentially have three. So I just didn't know yeah. what yeah. to do with them. So I never did see that at Orchard Denise, so. And I think really, I mean, they were purchased because we were trying to find some consistency. Right. Throughout the schools to be able to kind of- I don't think that's a bad idea either. <laughs> to kind of use some of the same curriculum. And mm -hmm. so that is what, was found okay. and purchased them. Well, there's definitely not one here in Orchard, Kendra. So, <laughs> did you file thirteen that, Denise? What? Did you file thirteen that? That's what Mr. Saney always calls it. I'm kind of OCD, so there's not much left. <laughs> or maybe Becky had it and then she left it in one school or the other. I, I don't ever, but I never I know. I never. But I think they've been down there probably since Mr. Greer days because there was quite a. They were buried. 
Do you have three of them? One for each level. There was an yep. elementary, yeah. a middle, yep. and a high school. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, that's like what in I don't know if <laughs> well, I tell you what, that was my, uh, in March, when we shut down for COVID, I was, I mean, I showed up to school almost about every day, except maybe Friday. And I went through this office and I finally threw things away from 1986. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I mean to tell you, Listen, I had a whole, yeah, it was amazing. I'm so still looking for the, the career card sort. Yes, need I them. Don't them. ever forget me. <laughs> Dad threw his away and he's like, he gifted me all the junk from his office, yeah. but the card sort. I spent a lot of time playing with that. Yeah. No, I, I threw that away. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> I drowned in note notebooks because I do have quite a few, but I did go through and yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I save everything, I guess. Mm -hmm. But well, uh, I think we have to be out of our building by June fifteenth. So <laughs> our teachers need to start packing. Oh, is um, that when they've given you, Kendra? I think so. We might be able to. I think Mr. Saney said he maybe. I don't know that this is official, Tammy. Yeah. So don't say anything in your building. But um, he was maybe going to see if they were going to have like an empty room or something where, if we needed to. Uh, we could store some stuff, but we'll also have, should have some room at least in another one of our facilities that we could ship them to, you know, just like even if we had a, a classroom where we could just stack boxes in, you know, that are labeled or something um, temporarily, you know, to get out by August 1 or whatever. But um, yeah, I think the goal is for us to be out by June 15th. Yeah, I wouldn't think that all, the, I mean, like I think that building's huge. I mean, I eventually think there'll be more use, but I would say there'd be at least one that they could use yeah. because, you know, bringing over both seals. Well, I'm talking to Mike Flood this out. Sunday. So he wants to, Mike Flood wants to use Norfolk monies. I listened to him speak last spring and invest it in the smaller communities. And at the time he said he would like to start early child care centers. And he said, I would love to work with the ESUs but typically they don't have enough room. And he was saying this last March and this was kind of happening here, but it was under wraps, wasn't public knowledge. And so I just kind of bit my tongue. And then once it became public knowledge, Carol Teal and I both emailed him. And so he's asked us to speak. He's doing a town hall meeting as he's running for legislature. He's like, would like to roll something out um, because he said there's a lot of young people that want to move back, but housing and childcare are an issue. So he said, Norfolk will die without these small towns. So he wants to take some of their government funding and invest it in the small towns around it. Well, and I think they should, because I think too, you know, with our, that's one of our bigger towns to go to, to do, if we have to do shopping. I mean, you he know, said you we all funnel there. And if we die, they die. I yeah. mean, in not so many words, but. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's interesting. So, well, I just want to show on the bottom of our agenda, you guys, I put, and you probably maybe already know how to access all this, but the NDE resources, like we, I was in a Perkins meeting yesterday and they talked about two sometimes you maybe don't know. So I just linked the school counseling page there, the career development and the career technical education page. Cause sometimes I think that NDE site is not easy to navigate. <laughs> no way. Oh my goodness gracious. So I just want those two that they could be right there. So you could use those. Um, and again, you know, sometimes, you know, we can always explore that more, but I just put those down there in case. And, you know, like I said, with Perkins funds, this Perkins five came out that like now it dips down to grade five. So there's things, you know, um, I purchased some iPads. Um, so that way, you know, like I said, if ever I can come out and do more training with, you know, we I can bring iPads out, we can do some things with kids. So that's available. Um, if you're wanting to take kids, like I said, if and when you can never take them on field trips or career explorations we can go fifth sixth seventh and eighth now i have funds to do that so just to keep that in mind if you want them to have a go you know like i said those things out there so um right now there's not much happening because oh here's sonia because it's all um you know virtual or just canceled so hi sonia hi hello Hello. Hi, Sonia. Hi, everyone. Sorry I'm late. 
You're fine. I told him you had a class, so. You made kale chips. Ew. Oh, send them. <laughs> that sounds good. They're good. They are good. I like them. Deb, I thought you retired. No. <laughs> No, thank you. <laughs> no, I got. I don't have a hobby. Oh, <laughs> and um, Randall Creek. Yes, you do. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But they won't harm me year round. So, oh. um, no, <laughs> I. I'm trying to survive. Don't let this go any farther, guys. Just between you. But you know what? I am so tired of having to break in new administration. So That's we'll see what we get. And it never, maybe I'll retire sooner. I don't know, but no. That was the conversation we had, I think. Yeah. Is he going, yeah. do you know where he's going or is he just retired? I don't know, I don't know, but no. So, I mean, you know, it's kind of, all I know is I, you know, we grew so much in size. Uh, I mean, we have no lockers in this building for all the fifth through 12 kids that we have. Wow. And we, we import, a lot from South Dakota and um, you know, the elementary at Butte is at almost at capacity. And then I go to Lynch and doing all, I mean, there, you know, hindsight's always 2020 because I, I really lobbied to have two counselors here, at least one part-time. So one could do elementary, one could do high school. And now they're trying to say, well, we probably should have done that. Well, duh. <laughs> You know, so, but no, I'm still here. I would like to do five more years. You know, I mean, I like what I do, but you know, let's, let's face it, people. I need the insurance. That's one benefit I, I need the most. So here you know, go. I'm still here. Well, I'm but, glad you're still here. <laughs> I do have, however, I, there, we have a new ag teacher and she would like to go into counseling and i told her to get on the horn and she's starting to take classes for grad school so i'm hoping that when i do retire she can just step into my step into the job but she's very good so that's nice to have you know somebody yeah right because there. i tell you what you know um i loved working with ona and we worked closely and i really wanted ona to to stay and I could be the runner, you know, she likes this, she likes, she loves power school. I don't, but <laughs> getting to love it, <laughs> you know, but yeah, I don't know. It's just one of those, sometimes I'm wondering, I think, I feel like I am more of a mental health counselor sometimes, you know, but that's something that this year I can't, I'm not doing because I'm never in my office because I'm watching other classes, so I don't know. I'm still here. Well, good. None of you are going to retire, are you? Oh, good. I wish. <laughs> <laughs> After this I year. I know. The problem <laughs> is what I want to do when I retire, maybe not my husband, because he is retired, everything costs money. <laughs> everything I want to do costs money and it's like okay well I guess I better work you can dance huh you can dance dance <laughs> oh, around the pole and get money there you go <laughs> you know there's some places in South Dakota that might take it right. <laughs> yeah I know I know <gasps> one. yeah yeah well I tell you what even here in uh Holt County they had for the hunters out at this one place uh -huh. that they're trying to turn into a bar. They had the strippers and oh. you could pole dance. Let me tell you, I was driving to school when they told when I heard it on the radio and I back hit a deer because I was <laughs> <laughs> I, I hear they had quite a crowd, Deb. I heard. And then you, then the women could take dancing lessons, pole they dancing could. lessons. Yeah. Oh, this is a whole new career lesson. Oh, I know. It's like Katniss and Raven were their names. Oh, my. So I went out to the Dollar General here in Spencer, and I paid in all these ones. And the principal's wife is managing Dollar General. She goes, Deb, did you get this pole dancing? <laughs> 
do said, feel what? like you know a lot about the situation, Deb. Right. <laughs> she said, what? And I said, well, it's a former student that is, oh. Oh. That is running this. That's and great. Think you're going. Great right. school counselor right yeah, there. That is <laughs> work-based <laughs> learning. <laughs> but anyhow, I'm like, what are you talking about? She goes, well, don't you have a lot of dollar bills and then you do something on the side to get all those dollar bills. And I'm like, then, then it was, then it finally made sense. But, oh, you know, I'd break the pole. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's, you know. <laughs> oh God. They'd probably pay for me not to go on the pole. <laughs> Pass the hat so she doesn't I don't want to see that. I don't want anyone else to see that. <laughs> nope. Yeah. Oh, oh you're funny. Oh, Friday yeah. stress relief, Tammy. Thank you. Right. See, <laughs> there we go. You have to take care of yourselves too. Can we add that to the agenda. Pole dancing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, I got Lessons. A I got a question. I you know down here uh you had the edgenuity. Yes. Who uses that? Do any of you guys use it? Don, did you ask me to look into that? No. Okay. Who was it? Mm -mm. I know on our counselor listserv, I do know it was. Yeah. I knew so. I know some counselors, Let me, you know, in the state of Nebraska use it, but I didn't know if any of us did. All right. So I'm just going to tell you what I've learned because this guy has been calling me a lot. So finally, I was like, Yeah, I'll do a, I'll do a Zoom meeting with you. Um, <laughs> the program sounds really cool. And he gave me a demo for it, the whole nine yards. And then, so I asked him, I said, this is really great. And cause we use second step and I thought that it, it went along with second step because one of our school improvement goals, uh, for the, for the next cycle is going to be social, emer uh, social, emotional learning in the classrooms. And, uh, so I thought this is something the classroom teachers could really do. So I asked him what a site license would be, and K through five was $4,345, and six through 12 was the same thing. Um, and so when I shared that with my superintendent, he's like, yeah, no. Um, but the, I, he did give me a demo, and I've been using it in addition to the, you know, to our second step program, and the videos are really cute and whatnot, but it looks like something that it would be I think I'm looking at it right now, actually, there's 69 different lessons and the lessons are about 10 minutes each. So I don't know if that'd be something we could do a group buy with for ESU, but I, I mean, I liked it. It, some of it seemed kind of juvenile for fifth grade, um, but they have like bullying, cyberbullying, uh, dress and groom for success, um, impact and contribute to your community. I mean, they have all sorts of different things in different grade levels. So it, it's a neat program. It's just super expensive. And that's yearly. That's not a, that's not a one time only that's yearly. And I don't know about you guys, but we don't really have the $8,000 to spend for, on that. Um, plus like for how, 60 kids or whatever. Right. You know. Right. right. I'll, I'll bring that up to like sometimes with ESURCC, like they, sometimes they can purchase things for less and I'll bring that up and uh, we'll see where it can go from there. So. And I know it's, it's more too than just the, um, this was the SEL. I know that our fifth grade teacher has been using, I believe it's path blazers with the free account and he loves it. And he also was like, we need to, I'm going to see, make sure which one he has that he has been using. Um, and he What's gave it? everybody the trial account wasn't this uh, something that schools were using if they had kids at home, like online learning? Because it, it's content too, right? Like, because you're right. just talking about that, that was for math, right? Path exactly. Culture. So I don't know what school, was it O'Neill that was using it? Do you remember in the list, sir? I, th I thought I saw that they were using that because Cole had put out that email about what are people doing with all their kids that didn't come back from COVID. And I remember someone had commented that, I don't remember, but. Okay. Well, and then Mr. Jesse had made the comment, he was at a district that had used it and they really liked it, but they ended up going with Apex just because of the price. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, and it is, it's super expensive. 
that would be cool sometime to like have Apex come in and admit and, and ingenuity and like just yeah. have them wow us and <laughs> show us all the their, their bells right. and whistles and and have people talk about what the people that have used it, you know, and then it'd be kind of cool, you know. Okay. And if you want a free, uh, if you want to have access to it, I'm kicking myself that I didn't do this uh, Zoom meeting with him in January, so I would have gotten the whole s second semester, because <laughs> my my account, I had it maybe in October, and it runs out January 17th. But if his name is Rob Look, I can get his contact information. He, I mean, he'll give you free access, so if there's something that you want to, you know, check out, you can. Let me get, I'll put that in the chat. That would be great, and then we can, yeah. And so any notes that I took, I typed them in blue in the okay. agenda. So if you need to. All right. Thank you. Uh, yep, you bet. And then I, I'll send this link. I'll put it on our, um, our ESU page and then I'll send the link out to everybody. So. Okay, so I put him as a contact in there in the notes, so. Okay, so anything else for the good of the cause? So what are you guys doing for to take care of yourselves? Seriously, like. <laughs> Do margaritas count? <laughs> Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I'll bring the nachos and salsa. <laughs> My treadmill broke and that like throws me into a huge tizzy. So I've been sneaking around whenever there's not basketball practice and using the old gym and praying no kid sees me in shorts. <laughs> <laughs> I like privacy. Yeah. I don't know, just sleep, try. Yeah, but you think at four o'clock in the morning things that you have to do and then you don't you don't go back to sleep. So Yes. I don't know. It's just You all need a pet cow or a goat. <laughs> yeah, I could set you up. <laughs> My daughter would love that. She's obsessed. <laughs> Millie might be my project. I need a girl with a bow just because I need Good. Her. She's obsessed with cows. Oh she my gosh. She needs to come visit me. <laughs> I know she does. She wanted a mini cow last Christmas. Finally uh, got that off her list. I serious, I we we need to have a day with Gina because I have no I have no estrogen at all. I'm outnumbered <laughs> and I need I need a girl and uh, but I don't want one for good. I just, you know, what yeah. I can bark. <laughs> oh, I know. Yeah. Oh, I'm just, uh, my youngest daughter is going to be getting married. So I've been spending time. I tell you what, she's very indecisive on wedding dresses. So I don't know. I'm, I'm really looking to maybe. But you know, you can't go anywhere. You can't get on a plane. I'm like, why don't you just like go elope? <laughs> no, I don't know. And then you can't plan anything because yeah. venues aren't really taking reservations. And um, so I think it's going to be an outdoor wedding, probably in a pasture somewhere. I don't know. When is it? When has she said a date? September 20th. That was hard too. September 25th. Because she, you know, got to work around that football schedule of Nebraska if they have games. So it's like, geez, always. I, I tried to tell her, why don't you just get married on the sandbar on the Missouri River? You know, but she goes, oh, it'd probably be one year where they let the water out in the floods. You know? <laughs> probably. <laughs> it's been, yeah. Oh so, yeah, that's been kind of that's been kind of more stressful than school. 
And that was, was where you have no money to travel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. And then I said, so we, you know, we really can't do save the dates or whatever because she's like, well, if COVID's still on, she said, we're gonna, I don't wanna, you know, have to have it limited. And of course, in these small towns where you could have the reception, they're small anyway. So I don't know. I'm getting an education in that field. It was stressful. Brittany got married in October. So. Oh my God. Oh. I bet it was. Well, you know, it my was. cousin did. They had a Sunday wedding because they had to move it from May 16th. And the only time they could get the church and the venue was October 11th mm. on a Sunday. Mm -hmm. And then that, of course, in Lincoln, COVID kind of hit strong in. So I didn't go because, you know, our school was starting to see a lot of COVID cases. So... I didn't get to go and yeah and it warm and it cut the reception short because the power went out oh. so. we had the snow on Brittany's wedding oh. and that was the first snow here in nebraska so yeah we got it all we had covid <laughs> we had snow <laughs> oh my god yeah and luckily luckily we had kind of watched our our guest list and that as far as numbers because then that week was when they went to 50% capacity. Oh. So, yeah. I mean, how do yeah, we... it was interesting. Yeah. <laughs> but you may need to I mean, you need to have your notes because I tell you what, she's freaking and I'm like this isn't this supposed to be a happy time. Yeah. <laughs> An exciting time and not be a free... but then she got covid cuz she works as a nurse and um but she did have to stay home and I don't know. It was something else. Yeah, we were just fortunate that because we were really afraid either Robert or I or somebody would end up with it. I mean, we had a lot of it here in our building. And yeah, yeah, it it was an interesting time. Oh, oh so I have more fun to look forward to. <laughs> I told my daughter, though, I said, after you get married, I said, when you guys decide to have kids, if you have kids before five years, I said, let me know, because that might be my next job. Was there I'll you go. <laughs> babysit. The, uh, they may not like that, but I don't know. But I don't, yeah. No. Oh, and I need, I forgot to put this out. Wayne State contacted me. They, they are in search of people that are willing to, um, like, observe student teachers. So, I think I'm going to be doing that some of this next semester, but they're still wanting more people. So if you know of any like retired um, people with them, I think they have to have their administrative degree or master's degree. Just let me know, you know, if there's anybody that you can think of. Um, I said, I'd kind of put feelers out there too. So you can add me to that. <laughs> Sammy. I always enjoy doing that. Okay. Okay. I will. I've never done it before. So I'll either love it or pull my hair out, probably. I don't know. It depends on the quality of the student. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of Wednesday, did you guys see how they're extending their scholarship deadline? Yeah, yeah, they just found that out after everybody stressed over getting it in. Well, I had a parent say, so we busted our tail to get done, and we probably could have done a better job had we been given more time. Are they going to give you know, first come, first serve, but still allow it extra? Or are we all going into one pool or? I don't know. She was a little frustrated I and I don't know what to tell her. <laughs> <laughs> I said I'd reach out to last year because then it gives them more time to perfect. At least I'm like, it up and fix it, you know, or make it better, yeah. you know, so. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I don't know. I don't think, um, I, I got a lot of students that, I mean, I feel very sorry for my students who graduated last year and went, and this is their first year of college because they're not getting the college experience. And I have some students this year that if COVID still happens and it's not normal college, they're thinking of maybe delaying. And my problem that is year. if they delay, I don't foresee some of them going. Well, that, and then, then what about scholarships for freshman right. level? Because I did ask on yeah. Susan Buffett, and they said they would just have to wait and apply for it the next year. I, I don't know how that's going to look, you know, when you've yeah. got then 
that one class and then the other class is going to be graduating mm -hmm. in that pool. I, I don't know yeah. if I'd risk it. I, I don't know. I just tell, told him, I said, you know, in my experience, if you, do, you know, go, I mean, you, you got to be open to new experiences and everything like that, but I don't know. I don't know. I've had quite a few college kids that have switched to try and find somewhere that's doing at least some portion of it in person. Person, exactly, exactly. But then even at like UNL, they, they said they were going to do it on or that some of them were mixed or some of them were in class. Mm -hmm. and then what they, what ended up happening is so when someone would come down with COVID, well, you'd still have to have a hybrid class. And then the teacher would say, well, well I'll be here and you can come here, but I'm also going to be online. So my present, you can come either way. So it's all hybrid anyway. Yeah. Well, and something I found out yesterday, I don't know how many of you have kids that go to UNL, but I had a conference call with one of my students and one of the uh, advisors in the College of Agriculture, Agriculture Ed, Ag Leadership. And because UNL site, I don't know about you guys, but for me is very confusing of finding anything that is useful. So I told my students, let's just go into my office, let's do a conference call. So we did. And they found out in this call, that they are changing the catalog for next year. For, so the incoming freshmen next year are gonna be under a different catalog than what is on their site. Mm -hmm. And the requirements are going to be different. And I said, so, cause this girl found out that some of the college classes she took, she don't need. Well, she can grab all the clause that program. When are you, when I said, when is this new catalog going to be online so these seniors now can look at that he goes oh it's still in committee and i'm like really i said are you going to are you going to grandfather these students in he goes well that hasn't been decided because she might be able to test out of a math well we just so the guy sent an email to the math instructor and and she found out the yesterday afternoon, we found out that she they won't allow her to test out of a math. So today she's like, well, I don't think I'm going to go then to you now. And I'm, it's like, oh my gosh, I don't know. But you know, it kind of upset me because when are you going to let these people know? Just like with Wayne. Yeah. I, I didn't get the email about extending the deadline. My students did. Well, I, I had trouble two years ago. Uh, I, we had looked up with Mike Staney's daughter. Everything was going to transfer to Wayne, and she needed them, and we were all set to go, and she got to Wayne, and they would not accept two of her classes. Absolutely wouldn't count them as electives, nothing, because they re-streamlined the education program to try and get those kids out in four years because they were losing students yeah. because people were going elsewhere to get done in four years. And so then she, they wouldn't accept her, I think it was personal finance and history, absolutely would not accept it. I don't know. And I think, you know, I'm just sitting here going, well, you know, I'm not going to really push a lot of kids unless they know exactly what they're going to go into to make sure that they take classes that they're going to need. And that's why I said, I'm going to have a lot of students, seniors that are not going to take English 1020 because they don't need it. Well, to me, like even five years ago when I started, most of the, the dual credit were like a general, for the most part, you right. need this at most four-year colleges, and now they're getting really nitpicky, yes, they and are. that's not the case anymore. Yeah, mm -hmm. I just, I've almost come to a full circle where I, when I first started, I was like, how cool, push dual credit, push dual credit. Well, then some of them start college, and they're having to start their sophomore year and they're not, then they're missing out on the introductory level classes with the kids that are their ages, actually. And so I, I don't, a couple are good for transitioning purposes, but I think we need to change the culture and the mindset of our parents because too many college credits isn't really that great. I, I don't, that's my personal opinion. Like Gracie, my, my own daughter, she walked in with a lot of them and, and she missed out on like those introductory classes. And meeting with, your classmates. Yeah, right. The ones, the peers that you're going to always be with. And so I, full circle on that, I, maybe 15 hours between two junior and senior years. Yep. And that's probably about the most. If it, that's pretty, 
that's a lot still in my mind. So, yep, I agree. Mm -hmm. The problem is, is we have kids who with college is such an expense and they can't, it's okay. hard for them not to take advantage of the 40, you know, $9 well, a credit hour. But, exactly. but if, you get, if you get a financial scholarship anyway, if you're probably going to be eligible a little bit on that anyway, though, then you, we have a you, lot you of wouldn't end up paying for them because if you had a scholarship, you're not actually Those paying for them. Bubble kids that are... Yeah. yeah, it's yeah. the bubble kids, and we've got a lot of bubble kids that, on paper, they have money, and in reality, they don't. They have no and then, and they can get. Yeah, I hear you. But, and you know, okay, you know, think talking about Wayne State too. Then you had the R hop. They didn't extend their deadline. I mean, I had some kids really struggling to get, you know, because they wanted that ACT score. You know, finding places that were going to number one, have the ACT test so they could take it in time to get that score, you know, mm -hmm. because the R How are your guys' scores, the ones that took them? I don't have a lot have of no stuff. idea. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, yeah that makes me that. mad. What the heck? Are we ever going to get, I, I, I lost track. Are we ever going to get those little stickers anymore or do we have to order them or what? I don't know. Because no one knows. I have Iris said they're coming. I talked to Iris the other day because I can't even access mine online, Sonia. And so Iris said they're coming. She was told that they're coming. And you cannot find regular stickers that you have because I've tried three different sizes to get that all the scores on the sticker things that you can uh, copy off. They don't work. So I don't know. I'm waiting for my stickers. So that and teammates is changing this year. I, it's like quit changing things right now. Just this is not the year to rock the boat or do anything out of normal next year. Maybe but not this year. So is their <laughs> amount changing or their deadline or their requirements? What's changing with teammates? Oh, they're just, they're updating and changing to a different system. Oh, they are. And I don't want to, I don't want to know it. <laughs> I'm just ignoring it. <laughs> it'll go away <laughs> it'll, it'll go away and i i just that annoys me so are you talking about the teammate scholarship no i'm talking about um the system that we go in because i'm the coordinator to like oh okay get everybody matched and make upload their paperwork and blah 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 it's it, they, they love paperwork and i think that's because they're all working from home and they have nothing better to do and so they're trying to figure out ways i was just questioning because i did find out that in order to get this teammate scholarship you have to continue having a teammate throughout college now you do or you won't oh i hadn't heard that hmm. Hmm. i had never heard that either is that the guys three seniors said no thanks. Yeah. Is that the one that's from the central office? office? Oh yeah. yeah. Well, but other colleges award based on them being in teammates. So there's that benefit still. And then like But I've had kids get the central office one before and I don't think that was a that I think that must be new. That's a new yeah. thing. It's new this year. Yeah, I've had a couple kids get really nice ones from central office, so that's too bad. So what if you want one and they can't find you a mentor? Then what? Would you have to stay with the mentor you have back home? Surely not. Yeah, surely not. I wouldn't think so. You know what I'm asking? Okay, mm -hmm. I have to jump off because I have fifth grade coming in. Yep, that's fine. Like I said, we can wrap it up too, you yep. guys. Um, Good to see you all. Yeah. Let's we'll yeah. touch base yeah. next semester and see if, if we want to meet one more time, you know, and kind of go over some things. But thank you, thank you for your time. And please reach out to me if there's anything that I can do on my end. I sure will. Thanks, Tammy. Thanks. Happy holidays, guys. Yep, you too. Bye-bye. Thanks. Right, bye. Bye. bye.